Hello and welcome to another episode of Tottenham Transfer Talk with me, Jack Bryden. Now, new developments at White Hart Lane. Uh, apparently French press are saying that we've agreed an £11 million deal for 21-year-old Marseille winger Georges Kevin Nkudu. Now, I don't know a lot about him. It's come from left field. There's not much on it at the moment, but the French press is saying that he's on his way to London today which is Monday, uh, for a medical and will sign a four-year deal in the coming days. Now, that's what the French press is saying. Um, now, it may have come a surprise to a lot of you, but apparently Cl Clinton and G is also uh, potentially going the other way. Um, it's not clear yet whether it's part of the same deal. I'm, I don't think it is. Um, but yeah, as it is, we could be signing Marseille winger Georges Kevin Nkudu. As I say, don't know much about him, but I've heard, uh, I've asked a few people what they think of him. He's nippy, he's skillful. He replaced um, Dimitri Payet, who left for West Ham last season. He's only been at Marseille for a year. They did cost him one million quid, but they apparently want 11 million pounds. Uh, so around 10, 11 million pounds. So he's increased his value by tenfold over the last year. Scored a load of goals for him and he's impressed massively. Uh, one of the up and coming players in Europe as well. So it could be a good deal if it actually happens. Um, there's a lot of other players that we've been linked with. We did speak with uh, Squawker's Greg Stobart earlier on over the weekend. Uh, so this is what he had to say. So far this summer, the transfer window, we have done excellently well, very comfortable. How are you feeling about it so far? I think Spurs have done exactly what they wanted to do, haven't they, Jack? Yep. I think they wanted three players before the start of the window, a defensive midfielder, a striker and an attacking midfielder. The priority was the defensive midfielder and the striker. They've got Victor Wanyama in the current market, 11 million pounds for a proven East. Premier League player. Especially when you've been watching Ryan Mason towards the back yeah. end of the season playing in that role, I think it's fantastic business. Maybe not the most exciting player in the world, but it's what Spurs need. Yeah. Vincent Janssen, an excellent signing. We know they wanted Michi Batshawi before Janssen, but I actually think Janssen's a better signing, a better fit for Tottenham and the Pochettino side. It seems side. more like a, a Tottenham player, you know, strong. This summer just shows what Pochettino's kind of player is, doesn't it? You know, he's bought in Victor Wanyama, he's bought in Vincent Janssen, both big, strong players who work hard. Yeah, pow the power, powerhouses, proven, and like you said, the work rate, the attitude mm. is such a big thing. You, I'm sure you've been reading about Janssen and hearing about Janssen, and everyone says, such a hard worker, he'll run himself into the ground. And that's what Pochettino wants, that's what he demands from his players. And one of the issues with Batshawi was, how much of a team player is he gonna be? What's he gonna be like if he's on the bench? Can we really make him one of our highest earners? But you don't have those, those issues with yeah. Janssen, top scorer in the Eredivisie last season, and people are comparing him to Ruud van Nistelrooy, so I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a long way to go before he can probably start reflecting what Ruud van Nistelrooy did, but being the top scorer in the Eredivisie last season, it's not a bad thing, is it? 27 goals in, in one yeah. season, his first season in the in the top flight. Obviously, the Eredivisie is not as good as it used to be, but still, that's a that's a massive feat. Yeah, and the the risk is even it's not as guaranteed even as it was four or five years ago signing mm. a player from Holland. But I suppose they've done pretty well with players that have come from that market. For Tong and Advira and Dembele, Ericsson came from there. Ericsson as well. So I think they'll be pretty confident. Like you said, he's only done it for one year, but that's the market at the moment. You have to pay the top dollar. You look at Arsenal and West Ham scrapping around for a top mm. striker, and I think Spurs have done pretty well there. Yeah, I'm really happy with what's going on so far. So let's move on to the potential signings that we might be making. Obviously, you say we're not that fussed about making one more signing, but if we do, then there is a, a select few that we've been linked with as per. Up first, Sofiane Buffal. So for the people who don't know, who would you compare him to? What sort of player is he? Where would he slot into the team? He's a good player. Like When we're talking about this attacking midfielder, a lot of Spurs have planted quite a lot of seeds. So with Buffal, for example, they know how much he would cost. They found out about his wage demands. They've checked out with the doctor about how his knee's doing because he's injured. But there's no imminent move for Buffal. But he's a really talented player. He plays for Lille, of course. So the obvious comparison is going to be with Eden Hazard. Yeah. He's a little, he's nowhere and near we as love good. Eden he's, Hazard, no, he, don't we? he's nowhere near as good, but he's a bit sort of in that Hazard, uh, Riyad Mahrez kind of mould. A wow. dribbler, likes to get on the ball, can play all the way across the, the three left, right, centre, which is what Which is budget. ideally what we yeah, need. He loves those versatile yeah. players who can do that. So he would be a really good fit. Like I said, no contact with Lille yet, so it's a long way off, but I think he would be a very good fit. And that's, he's a fantastic player, scored 11 goals last season. Arsenal, Chelsea, they yeah, he's been all, linked with a lot of they're teams. All, they're, hasn't he? they're all looking at him, so there's a lot of competition for him. But for me, I think he would be worth the gamble. Would be an excellent signing. Okay, 
Next up, now this is one that I really want to hear about. So Mauro Icardi, in my opinion, I think this is absolute piffle to say yeah. the word. So I read yesterday that his agent basically is his wife. Now I don't know you, I don't know if you know the backstory behind this, but his wife used to be uh, Maxi Lopez's wife. Yeah. Uh, they split up. They're together now, and he's got their kids tattooed on his arm. Uh, now, she's been roughing a few feathers, hasn't she? Um, she basically helped Icardi sign a new contract with Inter last season. Yeah. They made him captain and said he was unsellable. But give us a bit more on that, that scenario. Yeah, I think it doesn't sound good at all. Does it? Now she's all of a sudden trying to link, yeah. link Icardi with Tottenham and Arsenal, saying that Inter have disrespected him. It sounds like more hassle than it's worth. He's a fantastic player. I haven't heard anything on this other than Spurs saying that there's nothing in it. Yeah. So, at, as far as I'm concerned, at the moment, Tottenham are not pursuing Icardi. Way too much money. It's 45 million, 45 million euros. euros, plus the wages, plus all the baggage. We've just been talking about the kind of players that Maurizio Pochettino likes. He doesn't even like football, he doesn't watch football. Is he, Pochettino really going to go for a player like that? No chance. So we'll swiftly, we'll swiftly move on from that one. I think that's And it's a similar situation with Goethe, actually. Okay, I mean, well, yeah, you don't let's have talk the about Goethe. Obviously, these reports in Germany have been coming out that Spurs have been talking to Goethe's dad and they really want Goethe. Spurs are adamant, we're not interested in Goethe, we've never been interested in Goethe, we're not going to sign Goethe. So it sounds to me like someone in Germany is trying to drum up some interest yeah. or get someone to offer a bit more money elsewhere. Maybe he'll end up going back to Dortmund, but I know Spurs fans were getting a bit excited, but there's no chance of Goethe coming to Tottenham. OK, well, that's, that's pretty much what everyone wanted to know. I think it's, it's quite disappointing, though, from, from Goethe's point of view to score the winning goal in a World Cup final and then make that massive move, uh, 31 million pounds yeah. or euros, I think it was, um, to buy Munich and then just not live up to that expectation. It must be hard for him, but you know, it just sort of, I suppose, uh, reflects his character as a player. I mean, a lot of, yeah. a lot of Pochettino's, um, well, something that Pochettino look for, looks for in a player is character, isn't it? Yeah. And that just goes to show that maybe he wouldn't be the right fit for us anyway, maybe. Yeah, and you speak to people in Germany and Bayern Munich fans can't wait to get rid of him either, right. which tells you a lot. I know he was a superstar before they signed him, but there's, he hasn't kicked on, he hasn't developed. There's no guarantee he would come to Tottenham and walk in yeah. to the team anyway. And I think he just needs a fresh start. It's not going to be at Tottenham. And maybe he's the kind of player who thinks he's better than he is, to be honest. He turned down Liverpool earlier in the summer because he wanted a bigger club. And it looks like he's going to end up going back to Dortmund, where mm. he started. He thinks should be, he should be playing for Barcelona or Real Madrid. Well, Pep did actually said he was the best player who's trained, he's trained since Messi. Well, he's obviously, so maybe got, that got, into he's his obviously got natural talent. I think yeah. um, when he scored the goal in the World Cup final, Lowe compared him to Messi as well. But he's one of those players, everyone tells me how good he is. But when doesn't I, put it on I watched pitch. him, you know, you watch him at the Euros yeah. or at Bayern in the last year or two, you haven't seen it. OK, well, maybe, that's, maybe we've missed dodged a bullet there. Uh, finally, Jorginho Wijnaldum. So he's another sort of versatile player that can play behind that front man. Someone that we could potentially be looking for. Wijnaldum's an interesting one because, you know, we're talking about Buffal and a couple of the other players they might be looking at that in terms of that young attacking midfielder mould. You know, Eunice Malley at Mainz or Ante Koric at Dynamo I'm Zagreb. actually quite excited he's about that He's a really one. good player and also he's got his head screwed on. Yeah. He wants to go somewhere where he's going to get the opportunities to develop. Reminds me a bit of Modric. I think bit. that's a big thing. If Spurs were to push for him, he'd be expensive, but he wants to play for a club where he's going to develop and he's going to mm. get game time. He's, you know, he doesn't want to end up like Kovacic, he's yeah. a compatriot at Real Madrid, not playing. So he's got his head screwed on. Spurs obviously had a, have a relationship with Dynamo Zagreb as well, and they've got the, Mod you know, the Modric's example as well. So that, that's the kind of mole Spurs want. Yeah. Buffal, Koric, Mali exciting young player who Pochettino can develop because he backs himself as a coach to make these players improve and we've seen it with Ericsson and Dembele and Lamella and all these guys already. Wijnaldum's kind of your backup to that. Yeah. You're guaranteed Premier League experience, you know, scored a lot of goals last year. I think he's pretty inconsistent. They've actually agreed personal terms with Wijnaldum's camp already. Okay, heard it here first people. They've agreed personal terms so they know what it would cost and they'd be happy to do that. The transfer fee is the issue because you're looking at 20 to 25 million pounds. Okay. And for a championship midfielder, I don't think at the moment Spurs have much intention of paying that kind well, of we've money. We've got Levy on our side. Yeah, exactly. So. And like we said, they're not in a rush. So yeah. they're happily give it a few weeks and see if the price comes down and see if there's anything to do, see if something happens with one of the other targets. They've got their list and they'll work through it. See, I think that's, that's what's so good about this transfer window. We've got everything done early, which is rare for, for Spurs. 
and now it's just a sort of a case where we can sort of sit back and, and say yeah. to teams, yeah, give us a price and we'll come back at you with a, with a lesser offer. Yeah, it's the value of continuity, isn't yeah. it? I mean, as Spurs fans, we're used to really exciting, dramatic and we're getting worked up. It's almost boring, but it's quite nice to have yeah. a boring transfer window. It's the continuity. You've got Pochettino, he's about to start his third season. No big, you don't have to worry about the big players leaving. Yeah. The players that are leaving are going to be the fringe players. They've got in early the two big transfer targets. And now it's a case of get a good pre-season, build on last season, because you know the, the squad's there, the mm. core's there. They don't have to make the changes that Man United and Chelsea and the other teams have to make. And I think Spurs fans should actually be pretty pleased about that. That's another good thing as well, is that you know you can get the players in early, get them into the pre-season thing, and then tell them sort of how this team works and you know get involved with the team. It's a good thing. And it's massive because we all know how important the work on the training ground is for Pochettino. Mm -hmm. Not just the pre-season, you know, it's brutal, two sessions a day, gym work, the running, the fitness they have to get to, but also tactically. Mm -hmm. You know, you watch Spurs last season, the moving around, the dire, dropping back, the fullbacks pushing up, everyone knowing what they were doing. They work really hard on the training ground, so the more time you can get these players on the training ground, the better, surely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just in a more general thing, uh, have you heard much about what the mood at Hotspur Way is like at the moment? Is, it, is there a sense of excitement? Are they waiting for the, the international players to come back? Is it, you know, uh, looking forward to pre-season? Yeah, I think they're buzzing, really. I think, it's a, you know, you've got the new players coming in, which always gives you a bit of a lift. Yeah. You know, I think one of the problems with Chelsea last summer, they won the title and then they didn't do anything. Mm. And it kind of, it stayed down, it stayed a bit flat after the, but now we brought a couple in, so that, that brings everyone up a little bit. Like you said, a lot of players have been out on international duty, so you've got to wait for them to come back. It's a bit of a complication. They're going to Australia, they've got pre-season to get through, and you know, five players from the England squad aren't going to be back for a couple more mm. weeks. You've got Hugo Lloris, who probably isn't going to come back until... We love you, Hugo. We feel for you, man. He's only going to come back a week before the start of the season, so what they're going to do with him. But, so it's always a bit messy in a tournament year, but I think they're pretty comfortable, they're pretty relaxed. Pochettino's gone straight, straight into it, and working them very hard. As yeah. I think they're already giving interviews saying how hard they're working and I don't think that's a bad thing because it no, worked last year. It can only be good. So that's it for this edition of Tottenham Transfer Talk. Thank you Greg from Squawker. High five. <laughs> Nailed it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Comment in the uh, comment section below. Give us some questions that you might want Greg to answer next time he's on. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Come on you Spurs. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred on and this is another edition of Spurred on Troll Comments with Reese James. Reese, how are you? Fine, thanks. Great.